Welcome back to its play, Yumi Neko, When They Cry. In the last part, Cannon cockblocked Jessica, and we can finally start on the actual mystery of the game. You know, the first day, October 4th, could the, the beginning of that, this was all prologues, so let's start it. Yeah, I've been recording since that in the beginning of this year. What was the month, really? They had eaten breakfast at a coffee shop in the station building. By chance, the inside of the shop had been decorated with Halloween colors since it was October. Tina and Maria had been awfully pleased with that. And since then, she had kept on making a fuss inside the train about wanting to have a Halloween festival without caring that she was attracting the attention of others. Halloween is popular in Europe and America. People aren't familiar with it at all in Japan. The shopping district was colorful, with color decorated with orange pumpkins. But the costume parades of children demanding sweets and saying trick or treat we're not we're nowhere in sight. Ooh, I want a Halloween festival. I don't want to wear those clothes. I want to wear look like a witch. Ooh, ooh. The family comfort isn't for playing. We're going to meet grandfather, so you have to dress up nice. While it wasn't completely full inside the train, it was really packed. It was all the seats occupied by passengers. Among them, Marie was making a fuss, stomping her feet on the seat while Rosa scolded her. Since earlier, Rosa warned her many times to lower her voice, but Marie hadn't obeyed her at all. Once Maria gets this way, no matter how much you try to explain the situation or how calm her, she doesn't listen. Before, before Rosie's to pamper Maria and give her give in to her times like this, but that had probably been a bad thing. When young Maria complained noisily, her mother had given in, wrongly assuming that Maria had listened to what she had said. Rosa relayed that error with the help of an educational book, and then <laughs> If your child is acting up, you should slap them. Rosa managed to get less and less of a mutual understanding with Maria. And aren't to be discouraged by her own powerlessness, powerlessness little by little. Howling, howling! If you don't give me tweets, I'll play a trick on you. Ew, ew! I don't have sweets to give you. You just after you just ate breakfast. If you don't give me sweets, I'll play a prank. If you don't give me a sweets, I'll play a prank. Ew, ew, ew! A stout old woman who was sitting nearby as Maria stomped her feet, put the candy out of her handbag, and gave it to Maria. Ew, got a sweet, got a sweet! Look, mama, mama, mama! Happy Halloween! Hey, Maria, you can't just accept sweets from strangers, right? Return it. It's alright. She's a lovely young lady. How old is she? Maybe there was no malice in those words from the old woman, but it seemed that Rose had taken that in an extremely humiliating way. Maria, I always tell you not to accept sweets from strangers. Ew! Ew! Maria got that! Ew, ew! No, Maria's! Let go of it. Don't, don't I always tell you to listen to what Mama says? Maria's! Maria's! Ew, ew, oh my god, why do I keep saying ew? Don't I always tell you not to say ew, ew? Ew, 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 ew! Rosa reflectively hit Maria violently on her cheek. In a flash, Maria started crying loudly. Rosa immediately took the candy from Maria's hand and pushed it back toward the old, the dumbfounded old woman sitting next to them. Please, not just give sweets to my daughter. Oh my god. That is the face of evil. I'm very sorry. Breathing heavily, Rosa once again held the candy out to the old woman. After the old woman grew bewildered about what she had what she, what she should say, perhaps she understood that that was what she had done may, may have caused trouble to a parent and child. And she accepted the candy back, apologizing. Then, Rosa finally took notice of her surroundings. Her daughter's clothes were all messed up. She was crying and shouting with her nose and dripping. And there, was, there were dim, mean dumbfounded patches watching them. Except for the sound of the train running, the, the interior was completely silent. Fortunately, that pitiful silence didn't last more than a short while. However, it was followed by an even more painful atmosphere as everyone whispered. Maria shouted, cried, kicked, and stomped her feet as usual, paying no heed to the people seen around her. Impulsively, Rosa tried to slap her again. But she had noticed that the cold eyes of the people in the train, and couldn't do that anymore. I want to hit my daughter, but I can't, so I'm sad. When the train stopped, Rosa forcefully pulled Maria's arm and got off, almost dragging her daughter along. As, us as usual, Maria didn't stop crying. Rosa took her to the end of the platform and hit her cheek again. The moment she was hit, Maria stopped crying for an instant. Before long, she shouted and cried even more than before. 
Bro, the emotion exploded, grabbed Nava Maria's neck and, gra and dragged her, towing at her hair. <laughs> Mom, it hurts, it hurts! Ew, ew, ew! That's why I tell you to shut up! That ooh ooh of yours! I'm telling you to stop that! That reason you can't make friends in class, right? Get a hold of yourself! Why are you like the kindergarten inside your head? Why can't you obey what Mama says? Why? Why? Along with those severe words, Rosa hit Maria's cheek over and over again. The more Maria cried and shouted, the more Rosa hit her. And the more Maria was hit, the more instantly she cried and shouted. Mama, it hurts! Mama, it hurts! Mama, save me! Mama, save me! Ew, ew, ew! Why? Why can't you stop that ew? Because like this, you can't make friends. Because you all like this, that Papa's trip doesn't end. Okay. That, I'm sorry, Rosa? You don't, I'm sorry, you don't say that. You don't say the reason why, you know, your husband's away is because of her. It's because of you, Rosa. It's because you are like that, that I... Do you remember something happened? Is there something that you want? More Tim we called to her was the station attendant. Rosa glared him with a look that said, Don't cut into the problems of a mother and child, stranger. Station attendant surely hadn't wanted to talk to her. However, Rosa had been yelling on the platform for a much longer time than she had imagined. Her emotions, her emotional calling had caused the passion on the platform to advise the station attendant that it would be a good idea to call out to her. Rosa yelled at the station attendant not to worry anymore, because they would get out get on the next train. And then finally, or maybe we should say for the second time, she noticed the passion on the platform staring at her from the front distance. Rosa swept, sweat, sweat, sweat. Sweat silently felt the wind torturing her, making her sweat cold. He still kept on crying, chewing her own head. No, if this beating continues, she will probably keep crying forever. I... Again. I rose to recover from the evil heat inside her head. She knew she had surrendered to her, her soul to do something bad again. Rosa fell to her knees and hugged Maria, whose face was still soggy with tears and mucus. Maria, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mama, Mama! Welcome back, welcome back! Finally, Maria realized that her mother had turned back to being her mother. Then she clung to her mother's body and cried, burying her face on her mother's chest. Ooh. Forgive your bad mama. Forgive your bad mama. I'm really sorry. Please don't hate your mama. Ooh! Maria's perfectly fine. Won't hate Mama. Mama was only being possessed by an evil witch again. Wait, an evil witch? It's odd. Mama came back, so just fine. Yeah, yeah. Mama was just being possessed by an evil witch again. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Two of them hugged each other, asking for forgiveness and sending words of forgiveness to each other for a long time. After a while, the two of them gradually calmed down and separated their faces from one another. Maria's face, Rosa's face, filled for deeper after crying their eyes out. Do you want to have a Halloween festival, Maria? Yeah! I want to show the pumpkin Marco, the George O'Neachan, and Jessica O'Neachan! That was, that was a sweet, that was a sweet which had been alongside the catchers or shop where they had eaten breakfast. With a fancy sweet that had been a big orange marshmallow in the shape of a jack-o'-lantern, attached to the tip of a stick. Maria won that, and an instinctively pestered for it. Rosa said that there was no way she would buy such a sweet ring right after, right after they had breakfast, and I rejected it. Then Maria, I don't know if they will sell it at this town or not. Let's go off and start searching for it, okay? It, yeah, like you said, so like you like, like you so much, Mama. Love you. Thank you. I love you too, Maria. Truth was that they had no time to waste wandering wandering around us, a stopover station. If they missed the airplane, they would fall half a day behind behind schedule. She had left home with more time to spare. She ended up leaving. She ended up leaving late after chasing after choosing Maria's clothes. Who's so that? Rosa had been a bit impatient about since the morning. She looked at the clock. She had to get on the next train immediately. But her daughter firmly joined hand with her to go buy the sweets with her mother, and that hand was warm. To Rosa as she was now, it was more important to regrow her bond with Maria. To her, Maria was was not the only was not only loved daughter. She was everything Rosa had. Fortunately, they could see that there was a big supermarket right in front of the station. Maybe they wouldn't be able to find the suite exactly like that one. Maria would probably accept a simple similar one. Besides, Rosa also couldn't show up with a sway sweat up from crying, so I fixed her makeup. 
Maybe we won't find a marshmallow exactly like that one. But it's alright if there's a similar sweet, right? With that, let's surprise all your cousins together. Yeah! If it's a sweet I brought together with Mama, anything is fine. Two of the turns out, turn, turns out of the station in this unknown town. Rhea walked across the pedestrian crossing together with her mother, chuckling to herself, as if she was walking in an amusement park. They were still deep red. The two of them, mother and child, smiled at each other without any restraint, looking warm. Dear, what are you doing in a place like this? Hey, you can neighbor, it's you. It's nothing. It's just that this was a pleasant place to think. I'm finishing all of today's preparations. For now, shall we relax and wait until it's while drinking the tree? Sorry, I'm always pushing all my problems on you. Please, can't you rely on me, Mo? I'm your wife. Naturally, I'm grateful for you always coming to my aid. For that very reason, I'm able to devote myself to my work. I understand. About your work. And the topic of father's inheritance, right? Ho ho ho, that was nothing to do with you. It's nothing more than fishing for rotten meat amongst greedy siblings. It's alright, dear. Everything will work out. Your work never goes bold, goes badly. And so we stopped, we cuddled, cuddled close to chance. Ooh. She spoke words to reward Kraus for the difficult, difficulty of his work. Now, so he was herself the one that, who knew best that it wasn't going, it wasn't going well. Cross pride with something like a, sea, a seesaw or a large amount of money swings. A big investment is linked to large co collateral. The large size seesaw, the swaying is greatly slowed, and it's nothing which shows an immediate result. At times, you make more investments so that the seesaw in inclines faster toward the good side. Naturally, you do that because you have confidence that, in not so distant future, you'll be able to recover all the investments made. However, the seesaw Kraus saw and chose never turned out to be that he would like them to. His foresight wasn't wrong. The times were slow. They would never catch up with him. For example, think of a literal seesaw placed in a park. Due to its great popularity, there's always something playing on. Even if you went, wanted to play, you had to wait a long time for your turn. And then, if you found that seesaw vacant on a certain day and you were the first one to arrive, you were straggling and have to do it all by yourself. However, if you got on the opposite side of the seesaw, you couldn't play on it. And no matter how much time passed, nobody would come to the opposite side of the seesaw. She saw his popular piece of playground equipment, so if you waited, a companion would surely show up. Cobb was aware of that. The weather looked like it was getting worse, so nobody would come outside the play. He saw the popular piece of playground equipment, so surely someone will come. Vac if he vacated his place during the, this wet, the weather seemed to be getting worse, surely somebody would snatch his place away. And he would end up only longing gazing at the something fun playing on the seesaw around the distance again. On one side of the seesaw, he continued to wait patiently, all alone. That was across his product and its current situation. When well, I had a bit more courage, and so confidence to believe in my own foresight, I'd never have failed. Yes, yeah, that's true. Your foresight is never wrong. You are the only one who inherited father's quick wits. You inherited an internet this position that none of the other siblings did. Even so, I cannot believe that. I always schooled my own project like a coward. Why can't I believe in myself? You won't believe in a man who can't believe in yourself? Nobody believes! I'm always sitting on a set where the losers must sit. My father and my mother. And my siblings, all of them sneer at me. How long is it going to take for me to be set free of this complex? How long? Not so he knew. She went across anguish. At the eldest son that used to be a family, when forced to shoulder, shoulder, shoulder big bronze belief from now on, he couldn't open his pain heart to anyone. It's always compared to his father's great, great enterprises. I'll finish all the preparations, so you can just vote yourself to the family conference. I'll have handled all of them. Sorry. Will there be any problems with his father? No. Genji and Dr. Nanjo are on that side. I'll never allow those real siblings to meet father. Wait, why not? Why, why can't they meet um, Kenzo? Is something wrong? Hello, Gota here. Yes, please leave it to me. I am an angel to put my skills to the work for the big announcer and your job. In the kitchen, multicolored and in, 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 ingredients were arranged 
arranged in the primary arrangement for promptly being started. Even though it was still morning, the ingredients for dinner were already in saucepan and steaming. And we had to deal with several assorted matters of them other than cooking. Well, on the day of the family conference, he devoted himself entirely to cooking. The goat, who was really a chef, this was surely the greatest gale occasion of the year. Yes, dinner will be accepted to Chef Dick. A wonderful cut of meat is already anxiously waiting for it tonight in the register freezer. Please be sure to look forward to the meal tonight. It was rare for Goda to be in this good of a mood towards his fellow servants. Goda, who was bragging about being a chef attached to the Yushimiya family, being qualified to announce the cooking at the family conference was his greatest honor. Understood. I will leave everything to you. Also, also, it's coming sour there. Kurosawa san, I happened to see her earlier, but she is not here. I wonder if she went to make preparation at the death house. So she is going around again. I know, it is fine. And I'm counting on you from now on. Yes, leave it the reason to me, go to. Jinji plates it. Oh. Oh. I was Jinji. Jinji sided once, once sided from again. Saying it about Kumasawa was probably hiding everything, even though even though things were busy. And and the obstinate Goda, who felt like doing anything on a job he could sew off. Excuse me? The preparations for all the rooms in the guest house are complete. You received instructions from Malay to make preparations for four people that the children can stay there. But what shall we do? I hear this year, Bawasama is coming for the first time in forever. I guess Malady wants the four children to stay up until late in the night. Make the preparations. You do not need to tell Madam. I see. Certainly. So tonight, we'll have the late night shift follow immediately by the morning shift. It looks like these two days will be tiresome. Speaking of that, what if we're got saying the typhoon will circuit right over here? Is that alright? As long as the typhoon does, doesn't go too far straight from its course. In the situation, I, we will affect the boat trip back for everyone in the family. May family conference schedule will be prolonged to out around Monday or Tuesday. It will probably be a long journey, but I earnestly ask of you not all to make any blunders. Shannon, do not be in a hurry. Calm yourself. Cannon, be sure to greet them with a courtesy. Y yes I'll be careful. I'll be careful. This day, we entertain a very important guest. See that you do not make any blunder. Wait a minute. A very important guest. I guess they mean Battler. I mean, he's pretty important. We understand. Any guest who visits here is important. Cannon, in the truth is sense, we will see an important guest today. Make sure that you are prepared. Yes. Shannon, what's wrong? It seems you have been uneasy about it, something. Do you have prior engagement? <laughs> At prior engagement? Huh? N no, it's nothing. My apologies. Nay, son, an important guest will be arriving today. Detach yourself from your private life. I don't, I don't know what you mean by private life. As Shannon blushed just a bit, she turned her gaze away from the clock. Was it about time for the airplane carrying the family to arrive at N Ninjima? Uh? She had planned on to hide in the fact that her reunion with George after such a long time was making her heart palpitate. McCann, who stood at her side, understood her at her perfectly. Shannon, be quiet and accept this. Inside a bathroom stall, George was practicing something over and over, talking, talking about taking a small velvet box in, a, in, a, in his pocket like a quick draw desert gunman. That's not it. Um, Shannon likes a man with traction. Uh, it must, have, it must be more powerful feels to it. Shannon, put this on your ring finger. That's an order, okay? No, I don't think properly. It's still on the left hand. Maybe you should put it on the ring hand. Right hand. No, Shannon is not ignorant. Yeah, but if there's no free will, then it may a little, I mean. Oh, no, no. As he crossed his arms, Natalie, someone knocked on the door. Troy was suddenly brought back to reality. Hey, George Coon. You alright? Got a stomach ache or something? <laughs> Rudolph OG, son. It's alright, I'm fine. No need to worry. <laughs> really? That's good then. But you know, you're straining yourself way too much. Your ass will burst. Rudolph washed his hands, laughing cheerfully, and left. George knew that the most embarrassing part hasn't been over overheard. He patted his chest, feeling relieved. 
Curate and Rosa here yet? Not yet. She's pretty late. It's a good thing the weather's delaying our flight. If Lord gone on normally, she would have missed the plane. What would she have done then? Rosa Sunny's an adult now. She's managed it somehow. No matter how old they get, old brothers always trick their younger sister like children. There, finally, okay. Finally, Battler. Dad's always a kid no matter how old he gets. What'd you say? If I'm a child, that makes you a baby. Come on, Battler Chan, up you go. Stop it, that tickles. Stop. You look more like the two blue batty friends and the father and son. Look, she's here. I don't know, see you. Wait, then. Maria, you need to be. It's good to see you again. Great. Okay. Yeah, it's good to see you again. <laughs> this already, yeah, we went through this already. Oh, wait. Uh huh. Right up to it. Brother Sun, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you too, Maria chan. It's been too long, Kyrie Nissan. Hiyoshi Nissan. And oh my, Battler Coon. Ooh, look how big you've gotten. Ah, uh, come on. <laughs> it's embarrassing hearing that from every person I meet. Hey, Rosa, you're late. And the plan was on time, you barely have made it. I'm sorry. We had some trouble making our train connection. Wait, oh, I just realized that. She then that means the reason why they're late every time is because Rosa hits her. Oh my god. So, are we in the weather again? Oh, don't complain! I'm up before the 30 minute plane if this means 6 hours bouncing about on a boat! If we'll keep Captain here for an hour, it's too much faster overall! Is that Maria? You sure have gotten big. She's at that growing age. You last met her 6 years ago, right? A lot has changed. Women are all are animals that are born again in one day when they have a change of heart. Ew! Maria noticed a big man who she didn't run, mi or mix him on the road and hid behind Rose's back, wearing a battler. Hey, Batler, say hi. The last time you met her, she was just three years old. So this is just like the first time meeting. She wouldn't remember if she was free. Hey, Maria, long time no see. You sure have gotten big. Maria, this is Batler of Nichon. Rudolph OG-san's son. Understand? The brother's brother? Son is the brother of the son? Me? Ooh. She was obviously in her guard. After all, it would be no surprise she found it frightening for a large guy like Bauer to suddenly start speaking frankly to her. But I know that as well, and thought of various ways he might approach her. Then he noticed the sweet the sweet he had in her hand. It was a jack o' lantern sweet that Rosa had bought for her. I see it's October, that must be for Halloween. Hee hee hee, if you don't give me sweets, I'll play a prank, right? If I snatch a sweet away from a small child normally, you expect them to cry and start a fuss. The adults thought that method wasn't good, but surprisingly, Maria looked pleased, her face pointing to a wide grin. Halloween, Halloween! Look, Mama, Batler also knows about Halloween! Look, look! Hey, calm Batler and eat, Sean. Sorry, Batler Coon. No, no, don't sweat it. Please, call me Batler. Because I'll also call you Maria. Look, Maria, it's Halloween. If you don't give me sweets, I'll play a prank. If you don't give me sweets, I'll play a prank! Cat, cat! From inside her purse, Maria picked out a jack o' lantern sweet and similar to the one she had in her hand, and written it to Battler. Seeing that Battler accepting it was enough to confirm the, that their friendship. Those were amazed at how the children had established communication with each other. Maria, who had been complaining that she wanted to have a Halloween festival, must have must have felt like like Battler was his well, a friend since he since he also knew about trick or treat. But the ponder from before was completely gone. Now she was all merry, though they had been friends for decades. That's right, in Japan, Halloween is a minor event. You only see people marching in costume paradise on the news from overseas. I've never seen it in Japan. We want to wear a costume, too. Wanted to say, if you don't give me a sweet, I'll play a prank. But I like costume. I don't like wearing costumes. I see, I see. Next time, let's do it together. What would you like to dress up as? A witch! Beatrice! Oh, my lady, what are you doing, Judge Blade? Man, I'm looking for you. I don't want to be found. That's why I'm in this place. At any rate, I'm sure she only wants to scold me like it's your pants right and watch your language. Man, what are they? 
You know, like when the days of the family conference comes, for some reason, I feel uneasy about this witch. Man, why do you say that again? The family conference is the day when everyone voted to grandfather get gathers. Like I heard at this time, Batwood will also come after being away for six years. Something like that. Like, I always wonder about whether there's some relative who hasn't shown themselves for several decades might expectedly appear. Good old why that exist. It's Beatrice Beatrice Salmon. Nobody knows her background. Could she be grandfather's mistress from a long time ago? Maybe her descendants will unexpectedly appear and tell us to return the gold we were granted or something, right? Mm. Sorry about that. <laughs> Crown Simon and the others will probably have a discussion about the master's inheritance problem this year, too. Please tell me, we want to see that, right? I do not want to see this. Well, they get excited with that talk of the witch's gold. It will be just natural if the witch who gave out the gold came come with herself, too, right? Come on, san you know, you're very busy with retiring your work and all, but you've been here as long as Jinji san right? You know more about Beatrice, don't you? Well, I wonder. Nah, even if I try to remember, this old woman here can't even recall what she had for breakfast this morning. Kimosawa san, you're always escaping with those excuses, but you know something, right? So when you feel kind of devious, like you know something and you're laughing behind our backs, right? Nah, that's harsh. I don't know any secrets. The only thing I can say is that Peter Tommy is the golden witch, and that she is the other master who controls the night of the island. That's secondhand talking to grandfather. Must be paying to go along grandfather's tales, even though you've got paid. But I can see as much. What? In ancient times, Rubidin was feared and called the Axe Mugger the Better Better. The Axe Mugger was said to be a mid franchise form of Akajua, and in fact, was called Akajima Nimi 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 Nimi. It was the Mind Fisherman. I heard that. Like, is that story about since there was lots of sick and rocks and shipwrecks around here? They're out afraid and reasonably didn't approach here, right? He would bear himself down in academic whatever and team eat the soul of people's into next in time. There were lots of people from the Asian Islands who were just killed to upon their rafts. And then a traveling mountain or, or something built that shrine, repossessed the salt, reopened the cells and sell them here, wasn't it? What a shady story. And that shrine for the repo the soul was stored by an irreverent sun bolt this summer, which threw up the darkness of the night. Come on, Solomon, I really like those stories. I'll admit that it'd be pretty eerie for a shrine where the repose of souls disappear with a thunderbolt. Uh, but well, it was all worn out from the start. I wonder if it wasn't just carried away by some large wave. Nah, <laughs> heh Do you appear to have rocket gym or whatever? I don't even care anymore. Walk up from the screen with some beat this time. It beat this time I happen to come for the family conference. If she appeared to come? She was all kept silent for a moment there. Jessica, who wanted the presser to keep going, was an eerie silence. She was not really what she was scaring Jessica with her silence. She grinned boldly. Well, now, I wonder what would happen. <laughs> Wait. Well, isn't that wonderful? Isn't it? Isn't it useful for your work to enrich your heart and have an elegant time every once in a while? I think that the heart and the wall must be rich. Got it? I'll keep that day open. Please, make the reservations. Understood. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm counting on you. I love you, Oh, I love you, Kyrie. As, after, <laughs> after getting super, Rudolph hung up. For a seat, there are many executives with sleeves rolled up, even waiting the end of that phone call. I'm sorry for making you wait. Did the contact from America come? Yes, it's from the lawyer Dale Watchabout on the internal external line. I'll transfer it. Overall, how do you feel about the situation? That is, well, it seems one thing is not favorable. It seems the other party doesn't plan to withdraw from the tr trial at all. Looks like we can't fool him after all. Nah. Please, transfer it here. Understood. Immediately. The executive ordered that the internal line be transferred to the sec secretarial office. Hello. Hello, hello. Sorry for the wait, you shouldn't be speaking. Oh, thank, thanks. How is it going over there? Hello, President Yushomiya. Let's get let's get and go right to the to the main question. I have good news and bad news. Which one shall we start with? The bad news can go first. I can't find that there's no dessert. Understood. Bad news is that the other party has started preparations to pr prosecute our case, party. So a few days ago, a similar tr trial resulted in a judicial discussion where a, where a plaintiff won. 
The fittings we're also arguing with are ru with, with roughly the same arguments we all will all allegate. They were rejecting everything. I'm afraid to say it, but we faced the courtroom as we are now. The probability that our allegated we rejected is extremely high. So that other trial was a disaster. Even though I was thinking that those conditions were more favorable than ours. That's tough, huh? Then what about the good news? I managed to get in contact with the executives of the other parties. I explained to the other party the situation we are in. Your impression? Honestly, I expect I expect the condition will be extremely severe. We assume that change that company's name and the brand name will be ex inventive. Inventable. Where do we have the margin and negotiations, the amount of settlement money, who is the public money, the newspaper, and the amount of time needed to carry out those things? You are simply and directly telling us to go bankrupt. The other party, in the recent years, just changed to their second president, and the groundwork is not finished yet, over yet. If we resist until the bitter end, for the forces want to go against the current president, won't have they do same, some work in favor of the enemy. Hence, it seems the big shouts in the other party want, want those matters as fast as possible, too. Hence, for the sake of a quick settlement, maybe we still have enough leeway to pull away from mitigation of the conditions. At any rate, we will absurd amount of money for you necessary. You need to be prepared for that. Even so, it will be much cheaper than disciplinary compensation. Thank you very much. If there is any more progress, please contact me. You have a high salary, so no idle gossiping around. Nah. Thank you, thank you, goodbye. You're off hung up the phone. It seemed that the executive seen at the rece reception seats could guess about the content of that discussion. So you heard it, you rascals. Well, you, got the, you get the point. As long as we get the money, they will forgive us. After that, we should make only the amount of money the payment to that issue. But President, the supposed sum for the settlement that Mr. Watson Bonnie indicated is too much. What was that much of a margin? We knew, when we knew it would become like this, we started this devastating, didn't we? Calculating for, for that, we could escape the capital crisis if we were able to endure for a few more years. It can't be, to be stabbed here, really? We're in no position for that. I guess we'll feel at the step of the hop, step, jump. I could cry. We have no choice but to draw the money from the main bank. Banks are no good. They only, they only bet their money on warning horses. The situation is getting better, but we can't show widgets to the banks. President, do we have any funds which are un uncounted for? Funds that are out of our grip? Stop that! Do I look like that kind of man? The contents of my wallet are all exposed to you guys, alright? The counted account books over there? This is really boring, I'm sorry. In that case, we need to raise money. We need a sponsor who can draw and sell millions for us as soon as possible. President, couldn't something be worked out with one of your associates? President. President? Ah, uh, calm down, you bastards. I'll find a way to raise the money. You guys maintain the business without making too much noise. The other side is saying that they will forgive us as long as we gather the money. You already have thick pipelines in Asia. Things will probably be shaky, but we'll be able to maintain trans transactions. In short, the point is that we gather the money, we'll be able to settle everything. Look, I'll settle everything. I won't let you out in the cold. Start feeling like you've gotten on a big boat. When I settle things safely, I'll be rewarding all of you guys with a commentary tower. I promise. So shut up and come with me. Alright? Airplane suddenly shook. Probably because of the turbulence. Rudolph woke up because of that shaking. He had woken up early that morning. He had ended up drifting off to sleep while resting in his seat. Are you alright? You are still very drowsy, aren't you? Yet it seems you're very, very busy at your work. Being busy at my work is great, isn't it? I start wasting time, we'll be out in the cold starting tomorrow. You're right. When Battle Raccoon comes back, it'll be a problem if the two of us have to go about the bragging. That's right. After six years, the world family is president. Is present, so the family had us give his best to be able to spend time together with outsiders. When we looked outside the window, he saw that the airplane was already starting to drop in the altitude considerably. Fishing boats, which had only looked like black grains until a short while ago, started to become a query visible. If I could borrow ten million and a one by prostrating myself before father, I'd do it a dozen times, but if I can't, I better hurry and start to hide myself. I've always depended steadily on his financial support, and I'm going for the inheritance. I'm going to hell. I guess father won't want to meet me like this.
Okay, I'm sorry. I, I have the end of it off here. Can we ever get to the part where they actually go to the... F okay, I'll continue the scene, actually. Could be natural shooting and grand frames. I don't know if Kindle's face sign. Kindle's eyes were rude to his those strange magic books. I don't want to join the argument of those vultures. They can discuss how they will suck my bones as they wish. They really are foolish. Meh meh. How troublesome. Now shook his head slightly. To him, children and grandchildren were such lovely things, and he believed that their growth was the only enjoyment for old men. To him, Kindle's words were a very sad thing. If the time I must leave this room comes, I will show myself. This that old one does not show itself. When Kendall raised his face, in the direction of his gaze was the port- Oh no. Please tell me he's not going to go on and on again. Inside Kendall's head, there was nothing like today as the day of the family conference and all my dear friends will gather together. There were only the faces of the witch in the old painting, who didn't smile except inside the portrait. Everybody knew that, that when Kendall talked about Beatrice, that's how he would- in Inside his wrath. Today, I will hold a certain ceremony. Huh? And what would that be? It would be more accurate to call it a gamble. After all, miracles only dwell within magic within magic based on risk. I'd already heard that story many times over. He would call it Kenzo's favorite phrase. It seemed like Kenzo believed. That like miracle could happen by betting your own fate with a certain kind of risk and triumphing. Kenzo Shine, you were the one who called the golden gamble? Oh man, could do well in the other world any time. I wonder what kind of game you'll seek. I kind of guess it'll be worth seeing. <laughs> I see. It's sacred to I was my research to hitch. Hitch you is not perfect as magic world. Well. Could I call you the? Could I call you the? Could I? Would you? I, oh, I don't even care. I believe in miracles, and if I win, you'll be able to understand clearly that all my research, which probably only appears as vaguely in my own eyes, did bear fruit in these days. If you win. It will be all in that nothing more than the vulgarity of an old man who can go to the other world at any time, according to what you saw. Huh. I wonder what on earth this game you will shine. As your family in that bit, no wood ceremony? I'm gonna pray for the bottom of my heart that you can get win that ceremony. Hm. <laughs> I thank you. Speaking of that, Kendo Shine, you heard that long for good, bad, bad, bad. What? Ken's reacting in an unusual way, acknowledged his words, and turned around. Right, Balcon from Rudolph Shine's family. Her he will be coming after six years. I'm sure he has become a swing bow. Oh, Batula. Batula. I wouldn't call him long for a guest who doesn't show up for six years. After hearing Beatrice Bauer's name and showing an ill humored expression, of saying that was a letdown, Kino turned his back again. Get you six years went by in a blink of an eye to you since you became immersed in yourself in your research in his room. Hmm, oh my god, this is going on forever. The pairs of entry to react to that. I'm going to die. Oh no, I don't even care anymore. I'll put it all. I'm gonna go to the Okay, whatever. What is it? I am busy. Genji speaking. Everyone has arrived. And what's wrong with that? You can serve them tea or something. Certainly. I'll do that. Kenzo hugged up the phone rudely. Looking at that, Nando sighed again and shifted his head at attention outside the window. As he is now, Kinzo's probably not interested in any kind of guest. He had someone in mind, but that guest couldn't appear. I now stared at the witch of the portrait, who had a can candid facial expression and able to decide whether she was smiling or sad, and gazed up at the weed color sky. I'm sorry, this is this scene. Can we get to the part where they're actually at the place? What's this? Very well, all the pieces are lined up now. Shall we line up all these pieces again and start a new game? Do you have, any, do you have a problem? Nope. We looked at him and challenged while Elgin smoking her pipe. And Battler? He just slowly shrugged his shoulders, although he didn't really feel like being here, being her opponent. He was gonna meet his he was gonna meet, make his eyes meet hers, but that didn't mean he wasn't a match for her. It signified his pl plain termination to never be taken by the art artificials of his of this bastard. Version of his power, power termination to fight. Don't you tell me you don't have a plan. Since I don't know your moves, I don't have any plan. Feel free to take the in initiative. Hmm, naturally, you'll be, you'll want me that. And while we sell destroy your defense, with how many moves can I checkmate you? That's enough opportunity to display my skills. Whatever moves you come at me with, I won't believe you. As long as I can stand my ground on that point, I won't lose. And that's that. 
This game was made so that I can't defeat you, right? Maybe you're right. However, you know what? I'll decide how many times we'll repeat this game. It'll be repeated over and over again until I win and you recognize your defeat, okay? In other words, it's just torture. It's eternal torture that will continue until you surrender to me. I will do eternal until you recognize me in the existence of the witch. In that case, I'll go along with you endlessly any number of times until you run out of the patience. I never lost in these endurance competitions. Did a witch from somewhere suggest that to you? Meh, <laughs> that's just fine. I'm tired of listening to your rambling. Come on, get this started. Come, let us begin. I already know your moves far too well. A defense doesn't amount to, amount to much as the plan behind is known. Don't think you'll be able to find me with the same moves. Beatrice, I have only one thing to tell you before we start. What is it? You're free to say anything. However, whether I believe in you or not, it's something I'll decide for myself. No matter how much of this magic you have, my soul won't yield to you. You think this is a torture for me? You're wrong. Then, what are you talking about? This is a torture for you. <gasps> okay, okay. Phoenix right. Oh, yeah. Someday you will yield and give up. Until then, you'll be tortured over and over again. How interesting. That's a nice comparison. Torture where we went. Torture where we torment each other sounds truly interesting. Come, shall I begin that torture? You should be a battler. 